Hey everybody, welcome to Noah's Window. Uh, today we're going to be continuing the story of Peter, and uh, we're going to be talking about where this this is sort of part two of a part one and two discussion because yesterday we talked about the moment when Peter denied Jesus three times, but today we're going to be talking about the moment when Peter was restored. And um, you know, just in case you weren't with us yesterday, basically Jesus told Peter. Uh, the night uh, the night he was arrested, Jesus told Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow, you'll deny that you even know me three times. And Peter said, there's no way I would do that. Never in a million years would I deny you. But sure enough, when Jesus was being interrogated, Peter was sitting outside and three different people asked him if he was, if, if, if he was a friend of Jesus and with Jesus. And three different times he said no. And the Gospel of Luke even tells us that at that very moment, Jesus looked at Peter. And Peter was overwhelmed with shame and he went away crying. And I mentioned yesterday that just like Peter, many of us have had a similar experience where we, we told God that we wouldn't mess up somehow and then we did. And for different people, this moment happens at different times. You know, for some people that, that moment of just hitting a wall, for some people that moment is when they were hugging a toilet seat because they drank too much the night before and they realize alcohol has, has just brought them to a point of brokenness. Uh, for some people, that moment is when a marriage falls apart and there was a lot of wrongdoing that, that led up to that. Um, you know, for, for others of us, it's just a moment when we just feel as if we've fallen very short, which by the way, the Bible says we all have fallen short, but it's just a moment when we feel as if we've fallen short. And that's exactly what Peter was going through. And here's the thing, when we hit a wall, there's two different things that can happen. We can either decide that we've fallen so far that we're not even going to seek God anymore and we're just going to kind of give up everything God related, give up church, give up, give up reading the Bible, give up, give up reaching out to God. That, that's, that's option one. Or option two is when we decide that this is going to be a brand new start and that if we have to start from square one, then we start from square one. But we, we, decide, we decide to be broken and repentant and say, God, I know, I know that I've done this, but God, I'm starting brand new. I'm starting fresh. That's option two. And here's what's so cool. God always prefers that we choose the second option, right? God always prefers that we choose the second option. Why? Because in 2 Peter 3, 9, God tells us, God tells us that he does not want anyone to be destroyed, that he doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but he desires that all people come to repentance eat that Calvinism, okay? He, 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 desi he, he doesn't desire anybody to be destroyed. He doesn't desire anyone to perish. He desires all people, all people to come to repentance because he loves all people. He loves everybody in the world. And, you know, and what I love so much is, you know who wrote Second Peter? Peter. So the guy that we're talking about right now who felt like such a failure, he was the one that said that God doesn't desire that anybody perish, but he desires that all people to come to repentance. And you're part of that all. And if you feel right now like, like you're beyond the grace of God, here's the thing. He desires all people to come to repentance. So back to the story. Peter thinks he's not a disciple anymore. He thinks he's not part of the club anymore. And so he briefly goes back to fishing. At this point, the crucifixion has occurred and the resurrection has occurred. And... Right after the resurrection, Jesus decides that he wants to have a discussion with Peter, which first of all, Jesus appears to the disciples at different times. Um, but Peter is on Jesus' appointment list because Jesus, Jesus wants to have a very specific conversation with Peter about what has transpired, but, what, but, but, but also about the future. And funny enough, this all begins, this all begins on a day when the disciples are out catching fish. Peter and some of the other disciples are out fishing and uh, they see this man on the shore and the man calls out to them. He says, hey guys, hey boys, have you caught any fish? And they call back, hey, we haven't caught anything. It's been a tough day. We haven't caught any fish. <laughs> and just like, just like what had happened a few years before, the man on the shore says, hey, cast your nets on the right side of the boat. And so they do. They do cast their nets on the right side of the boat and they catch so many fish that they, <laughs> they can't pull the net out of the water. And immediately they all get deja vu. 
because they've been, they, they've seen this before. This is the second time this has happened. And at that very moment, the Bible says, the Bible says that Peter realized immediately, it's, it's Jesus, it's the Lord. <laughs> and even though Peter feels so broken from what's happened, he's, Peter is so excited to see Jesus that he leaps out of the boat. He jumps out of the boat and swims to shore because he's so excited that it's Jesus. And when Peter got to shore, he discovered that Jesus was already, Jesus was actually making them breakfast. Jesus was cooking. I don't know if you know this, that Jesus cooked in the Bible, uh, but Jesus is cooking some fish over a fire for, uh, for breakfast for the disciples. And so when Peter gets there, um, they, they have a meal. Everybody has a meal together. But I wanna, I wanna show you the conversation that happens immediately after this. Look at this. And uh, this, is, this is John chapter 21, and we're gonna start in verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Or, uh, sorry, you know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And then Jesus continues, I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know what, what kind of death he, he would have to glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. This is a powerful conversation. A powerful conversation. Why did, why did Jesus ask Peter if he loved him three times? You know, why, what, and, and why did Jesus keep saying, feed my lambs? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of symbolism here. And, and, and a lot of people get confused by this conversation. And here's the thing. This is one of those passages where I don't think we'll ever be able to fully explain it until we get to heaven. But this is my best guess. This is what I think Jesus was trying to, this is what I think Jesus was trying to communicate to Peter. Three times, three times Peter had denied that he knew Jesus. But three times Jesus is giving Peter the opportunity to say what's really in Peter's heart. Because, you know, Jesus, Jesus is telling Peter, look, I know you deny me three times, but I also know that's not you. That's, that's not what's in your heart. I, I, I know that you love me. Here's the thing. When Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus knew the answer to the question, which because Jesus knows everything, <laughs> he, al he always knows the answers to the questions he asks. He asks the question not for his benefit, but for the benefit of the person he's asking the question to. Jesus knows Peter loves him. But what he's doing is he's giving Peter the opportunity three times to say what he knows is really in Peter's heart. And, and three times Peter said, I love you. But more than that, Jesus says, feed my lambs. What does Jesus mean when he says, feed my lambs? Well, in case, I mean, a lot of you already know this, but what Peter would go on to do is he would go on to basically be the leader of the early church. And every time Peter would preach, every time he would preach the word, he was feeding God's lambs. He was giving the gospel. He was giving the word of God to the people who needed it. And what I love so much is Jesus is telling Peter, hey, you know, I, I know you felt like, I know you felt unrighteous. I know you felt like you were beyond grace. I know you felt like you failed, but guess what? Your mission, your mission to feed my lambs, that mission is still here. That opportunity is still here. That, that, the, the, that calling that I placed on your life. Peter, remember that day when I called you and you were cleaning the nets and I said, come be a fisher of men? That calling is still available. It hasn't disappeared. And I think, I, 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 I think th th this is what I love so much. Peter took that opportunity. Jesus gave him an opportunity and said, look, you can still feed my lambs because Peter, I still have a job for you. You're still my disciple. You're still my apostle. And Peter went on to become one of the greatest preachers who ever lived. He shared the gospel with thousands of people. 
and God used him as an instrument of his love to the world. He was a broken man. He was a man that made mistakes, but he was a man that God used. And uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about his ministry and what God, what, what God did through Peter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for your healing power. Thank you so much for the fact that even when we feel as if we've entered a season where, Father, thank, thank you for the fact that, that you're able to take broken things and piece them back together and that you're able to, you're able to make beautiful things out of what's broken. Father, uh, I just pray for anyone out there who, who, needs, who needs you to get closer to them, Father, I pray that you would draw near to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Noah's Window. We're going to continue with one more episode tomorrow about the life of Peter. Thank you.